Thank you so much. I, it's the first time as somebody refers to me as an actor, but I will try to show you that sciences are really fun. I hope so. I always wanted to be a scientist. And just to think about the areas that are important to me, I want to talk about something that I called extreme biomimetics. And in other words, something where we can combine maybe all the science, sciences together to come up with new generation of materials um, that are pretty much inspired by nature. So if we were to think about new generation of environment and materials and devices or maybe houses that uh, may use technologies of the future, in particular, and this list can be extremely long and you can put things on this list, that they can adapt to their environment, if they can harvest energy, if they can mechanically reconfigure, collect and deliver water, collect light, self-heal, um, change color, not that critical, but might be cute, um, <laughs> self-clean and resist biofouling and whatnot. And especially the last one is here, just because finally the winter is over, is repel ice and moisture when needed. What I feel strongly that we as scientists and specifically as material scientists can learn from nature. So the approach that I feel extremely important and may help us a lot is to learn from nature and think about design and think about engineering and sciences and to build as organisms. So really by self-assembly, not by top-down manufacturing that we use, but really trying to do it in a such a way that the materials become adaptive, responsive to environment. So many ways we can think about it. Um, we can use biological molecules, we can use biology itself, or we can just use principles. And I am really on the side of using principles of biology to new materials. In, I can say, at least from the point of view of beauty and interesting research, I can tell you that it's really rewarding business. There's a just subset of cover stories, or cover, covers on some of my research in different areas, um, where all, honestly, stolen from nature. And let me give you just a couple of examples, very fast. One is a beautiful deep sea sponge that's called Venus's flower basket and there is nothing spongy about it. It's actually fully made of glass, and this glass structure has fiber optics, actually better fiber optics that we use now, and there's a creature that, was, that evolved 500 million years ago. And if you look in addition to that, it actually has a beautiful design, very similar to the buildings that we build now, and yes, it looks like a house, it's made of glass, and in fact, it is used as a house because inside that sponge, there is always a pair of shrimp that use it as a house, live inside, and, in, and they're happy because it's illuminated house of the deep, and they're protected from environment, um, from those who want to eat them through these sophisticated features of this design. So amazing story. And not only that it teaches us how to build and maybe improve fiber optical materials, or how to build strong glass materials that are generally bad, but in fact, I uh, could tell you that I was trying to teach almost the entire class on mechanical engineering and civil engineering just based on the design features of that sponge because in fact it uses almost everything we use these days in bridge construction, constructions, building constructions, multiple beams that are of course stronger than single beam. And then if you look at every of these beams, this is fiber enforced material, just like we use fiber enforced cement. And then every fiber within this fiber enforced material is actually laminated structures and we use laminated structures to build stronger materials. So, and this is sponge. It's a deep sea sponge, not very evolved organism that is capable of doing it. And now we're going further and further understanding the design principle just recently, actually two weeks ago, published a paper in PNAS trying to think about what is it that is responsible for such a huge strength of this material. So with that, 
I want to actually go to other problems. Let's say I want to put on, on the slide everything that bothers us, all kinds of sticky problems of our life, whether it's ice accumulation, not as critical today, if, but if I would give this talk three months ago, it would be much better. But if we talk about dirty windows, solar panels, marine fouling, graffiti, or medical devices, there's completely different phenomena, obviously different, but there's a common feature. And we, as material scientists, always try, try to think about common principle. And in this case, there is an accumulation of unwanted material on the surface. Different, but we don't want it. So what could we do to solve this problem? For some time, the idea was to use natural principle, such as sacred lotus leaf that has the ability to clean itself. However, it doesn't work that well because lotus leaf evolved the structure to deal with water, not with ice, not with dirt, not with, um, not with oil or blood. So is there a better system? It's really interesting to look in the nature for solutions for unexpected problems. And here is another, um, also plant, but a different plant. It's a carnivorous plant that on a dry day, insects are running around happy, thinking that nothing bad can happen to them. But on a wet day or after the rain, they cannot stay put on the surface of this plant. As, as you could see, they're sliding into the digestive juices in the stomach of this carnivorous plant. And the plant doesn't have to do anything about it, not even as a Venus flytrap to trap its food. And if you look at these structures, it's not as simple as these ants are capable to take uh, attached to surface through these um, mechanical attachment um, parts. It's actually mostly because of the oil that is released from their feet to provide adhesion. So what does this organism do? It picks up water and creates a water oil interface. And as you understand, liquids are very slippery. Everything slides. So the, the ends of hydroplaning, what we decided to do, is really to steal this um, approach from nature. We are not using water. We are not using the same material as plant does. But we designed this material that is called slips, which are slippery liquid infused porous surfaces that solve so many problems in design of materials that repel everything. Just to give you a couple of examples, there are many more than one can give. Here is one where there is um, oil running on a slippery surface. Nothing remains on the surface. This is lotus-inspired in surface in the middle. And I actually thought that it would be seen on, on the slides, but uh, that my finger is seen on the slide, but it's not. And the bottom part is just smooth surface, and you could see how much better the material that is made based. That is a demonstration in the Capitol Hill. <clears throat> That's why there is noise there, where we show that it can be used to provide surfaces that do not form ice. So the left side shows ice formation. The right side is a slippery surface, no ice whatsoever. Let me just stop that sound. There is more interesting things even here. If we talk about algae and marine fouling, half of the surface is treated as slippery surface. No fouling on that surface, while you could see a lot of fouling on the other side. And something that I was not supposed to do with graffiti with our Harvard sign, but just to illustrate that on the same surface, I can have one side slippery, and it remains clean, even if you use really whole range of paints to make it dirty. So it could be used for protection from dust. It can be used beyond that for things that is useful in medicine. So here is examples of how blood is running on the right side on these slippery surfaces and how the catheters that are half treated with slippery surfaces remain free of bacteria at these surfaces while the blue part bacteria free. Uh, the blue part that has a lot of bacterial film is just a regular catheter material. 
So there's many things that one can do. And the last one that I just wanted to show you today, just to show the breadth of things and how nature can inspire us, would be a combination of multiple creatures now. So on the left, you see the paper that I published some time ago when I, used to, uh, I was at Bell Labs, where we found that um, brittle stars that are very close relatives of starfish, they actually make almost perfect lenses and how they optimize their lenses by running through these lenses pigment and covering the lenses during the day to optimize the light, light intensity just like we use sunglasses that change their intensity and during the night they withdraw it back to their system. Or if I take now opals, and many of you know what opals mean and how nice opalescence is, and who said that I have to design materials based on one biological system? And the third one would be butterflies. And if I combine them together in a very interesting way, which is if we talk about butterflies, one side, if you, I drop water on it, it's super hydrophobic. Just like lotus leaf, it sheds water. But if I drop alcohol, these creatures were not supposed to deal with alcohol. So they didn't develop protection from alcohol, so it actually wets the surface and changes color. So can we now combine these together? And we can. And we can combine physics, chemistry, optics, and fluidics, and design material that can be used for encryption, for liquid detection, for authentication, for anti-tempering, you name it. Here are a couple of examples of my undergrad students coming up with systems, you touch it, it shows the sign that everybody knows, I hope. You touch it with something else, with a different liquid, and it says, do it. Or, here's another one that shows um, appearance of my name in this case, and the moment it dries, it goes away. Or, yet another one, in collaboration with the Graduate School of Design, why not to... Oh my God. Again, sorry for sound, but here's the bathroom tiles in demonstration that when you take the shower, they show a nice pattern and the pattern gets, well, is gone when the shower is dry. And let's finish with a lot of interesting things. And this is actually, and you can visit my lab to see that beautiful chess set where you have no idea which piece this is unless you pour the right liquid inside and then you could see appearance of a pattern <clears throat> or designing interesting materials that show different patterns depending what you do with them. So it says thank you if you drink the right thing or nothing or bad words if you don't. And Coming back to potential Harvard things, here is other examples, again, all done by my undergraduate students, where just letter appearing from nowhere when you use the right liquid, or you can use it for art, you can use it for sports, you can do it with different colors, and these would be encrypted messages that you, that you can put together. So with that, I would like to finish, it's only a subset of things that one can do when biology and chemistry and engineering and design and many other things come together and to think about science and art and to finish with a couple of images of flowers that we grow. Each flower here is much smaller than human hair, but we can do that, maybe for fun, maybe not, but with that, the feeling of how much can be done in the university that has many different things coming together, many different parts of the university <clears throat> working together, and we may, at the end of the day, be able to design a new building, a new material that has all these properties that I mentioned, maybe beyond that, and just to finish with more fun, at least in my group, you are not welcome unless you can also work with words 
and come up with interesting way to hide your science or represent your science where the word clearly tells you what it is all about. As for example, bio-optics, which is biologi biologically inspired optics, offering physical and technological insights in color and structure. So you have to be really interested in what you're doing, definitely enthusiastic about what you do, and then I hope you will feel that science in general here is amazing. But in particular, my take on that, that by inspired materials, really can help you solve complex problems, and it is fun. <laughs>